Hello, my name's Guy Atkins and this is my second video for Stamp and Coin Mart magazine. In the article I wrote for the magazine this month, I told the story of Peter Cove, who is a collector from Dorchester, who has finished his mammoth collection of postcards by the artist A.R. Quinton. What I wanted to do in this video was read out some of the interview so that you can get more of a feel for how Peter started collecting and then talk about what else we discussed in terms of Peter's tactics and how he felt when he finished his collection and then also um, some of the other themes that ran through the interview. Okay, so this is the transcript that I wrote out having interviewed Peter and I thought I'd read out the first uh, couple of minutes because it gives you an understanding for how Peter started collecting in the first place. As a boy I was keen on collecting things. Old keys, coins, stamps. I love stamps. When I was about 14 a great aunt died. Relatives knew that I collected stamps. and There were four original albums from the Edwardian era in her possession because she was very old. And they gave them to me because of the stamps on the back but of course, they were all halfpenny greens. They were all the same. And then I looked at the cards and thought, well, they're interesting. They're more interesting than the stamps. And so I looked into it. And I sort of, well, refined them. And took out some of the ones that I wasn't particularly interested in. And sold them. You could get two old pence each for an old card. That was about 1971. And for some reason I kept back some cards done by the artist A.R. Quinton, who died in 1934. And he was an RA. To start with, he did engravings and then he went to work for Raphael Tuck in 1905. That's when he did some of his best work. And then in 1911, so the story goes, some of Quinton's original watercolours were for sale in Selfridges. And one of the salmon ancestors of the printing works from Sevenoaks in Kent bought the pictures, about six of them, and they started a relationship where the artist would do pictures which were then produced as postcards by the six colour printing method. And of course, colour cards were rare in those days. There wasn't colour photography. So A.R. Quinton, he must have done probably two a week because from about 1911 to 1934 he did about 2,350 cards well, pictures for cards, printed as cards in about 1990 I decided that I liked these so much I started collecting them in earnest it was my goal to get all of them and in December 2010 Peter finally got the last card, the card being of real railway station. And this was after, what, 40 years of collecting and the last 10 apparently took him 10 years to track down. And speaking to him it was really interesting to hear about the tactics that he'd employed. So the different adverts that he put in newspapers, including one in France, because he was convinced that the card of Dover had been sent over the channel. And he set up a real network of dealers and collectors across the country who could track down those final cards. And it reminded me a great deal of what Walter Benjamin, the German philosopher, had written about collectors and them having that tactical instinct and certainly something that I share with Peter when I'm hunting down those postcards with really good messages, which is what I collect. It was also interesting to hear Peter talk about how he felt when he finally got that last card, the card number 2350. For Peter, it was relief. Relief that this thing was over. He'd enjoyed the Sherlock Holmes element, as he said, but he was really happy, really relieved to have finally finish this journey. But of course, his, con his collecting continues. He, he continues to collect postcards of different types. So he's got one collection of Italian Art Deco, another of campsites, 
and he also collects cards showing villages around where he lives. But I suppose perhaps the most sensitive part of the interview was when we started to talk about what would happen in 10, 20, 30 years time when P Peter might have to give up the collection or perhaps in 50 years time when he's not going to be around. This was something that I'd been thinking a, a lot about in terms of this collection that I'm amassing of postcard messages. What will happen to them ultimately? And Peter said that this was something that he'd started to give a lot of thought to and hadn't decided what might happen to them. But what a great, what a great experience it was to be able to meet Peter and talk through these types of issues. Um, and if anyone out there has got tales of their collecting, whether it's extreme tactics that they've employed to track things down, whether it's coins, stamps or, or, or postcards, please get in touch. Or if you've thought about where your collection might go in 50, 60 years time after you're not around, then I'd be really interested to hear from you. Um, I hope that's not too morbid and that you've enjoyed this video.